Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable Podcast. We have a very special guest with us today, Trent Horillis. Thanks for joining us, man. Thank you. Who is he? For those who don't know, Trent is John's first mentor. So, got an exciting episode for you guys. And you're up in Jersey with two shops, yeah. Expressive Inc. Yeah. They're both Expressive Inc.? Yeah, both Expressive Inc., one in Wharton, one in Randolph. Look, I was looking to do a third, but now I kind of put that on hold to start to shift gears and make a social media push. Something I gotcha. Will the third shop point. come eventually? I would like to. Right. Uh, my plan for the shops is as they grow and the, the artists get better and they learn more of the ins and outs to start make it kind of a, a progression thing, you know, so that they're not just senior artists. They have an opportunity to, you know, almost partner up and take control of one and make it kind of their own. There'll be guidelines and stuff, but yeah, yeah. an opportunity to grow as uh, both an artist and an entrepreneur and business person. Because that's kind of the setup you have now, right, is, you know, people that have kind of been there a while might have the opportunity to start managing. Yeah, yeah. I have uh, Steph, who's fantastic. She's been with me like 10 years. She yeah. manages the Randolph one. And then Tommy, who's also great. And she's been me, uh, got to be close to seven now. She runs Wharton. Right. So uh, that's... I just think it's the best way because I know a lot of artists, they want to go out and do their own thing, and I see way too many fail because they don't either have the business sense or they can't do the back-end work. So the partnership would be they run the front end and the operations, and I run the back end and, yeah. you know, give them a higher cut and work out those numbers. Yeah. You know. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. No, I think that's awesome, like giving your art artists – sorry, I don't know what they're – like Distracting you. Yeah, what like just giving, right? like, your artists opportunities and stuff. Yeah, I think, look, when you got good people, you try and keep them happy, right? Like, they still have a job to do. and But you get to a certain level in this game where you've built your clientele, you're doing quality work. So what's the natural progression from there? It, it just, I don't want people to feel like it's stagnant or they got stuck. I want them, if they want that responsibility to be able to grow and, and kind of have something that they can call their own in some ways. You know, whether or not that'll work, I guess time will tell. We'll see. Yeah. But I'm also trying to lessen my load. It's tough. He can tell you. I'm sure you got a million things going on, and I got three kids. So you got the family life and yeah. the work life balance is impossible in this business. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly getting pulled in every direction. So if I can lessen my load and give somebody an opportunity, and we both come out ahead at the end, it seems like a win win to me. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, how long? Yeah. How long have you been tattooing? 19 years since 2004. Started right at the start of the year there. That's when you were born, right, Cam? <laughs> yeah. I was three years old. Three years old? Yeah. Yeah, I'm tattooing people now that weren't alive when I was tattooing. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's crazy. Like, I look at an idea, and I'm like, 2000? I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's messed up. You know, I'm like the old man now. You know, I'm supposed to. I, I probably am cranky. My employees will tell you I'm cranky. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, seeing my own tendencies in that direction, and I'm totally fine with it. I'm going <laughs> to lean into it. Look, yeah. You there, can't there, wait to be the cranky old yeah, tattooer. Yeah. <laughs> there are days that I totally lean into it. Uh, my, my crew will tell you, like, when I walk in the door, they know it's a talk to Trent day or don't talk to Trent day. Right, right. <laughs> like, and I used to have to come in and announce it be like, yo, if you got a problem, it's not your day to tell me. If you need a day off, it's not your day. You better wait. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I'm not, I'm not here for that. Yeah, sometimes the shop is, like, just as much my home as, like, my house. So, like, sometimes I'm coming to the shop to, like, get away from it. Yeah, everything else. Yeah. And I, that might not be the time no, to talk to yeah. <laughs> I tell them all the time. My, you know, I love my kids. Don't, if my kids watch this, don't take this the wrong way. But <laughs> the shop is my escape from the real world. Yeah. You know, all the drama, all the personal crap, whatever it might be. Like, I go to work. It's just work. I get to do art usually meet some cool people sometimes you know how it is you you got some clients you love and you can't wait to see them and some you're like oh and i don't know why but i seem to stack all the shitty ones in the same day it's just miserable <laughs> yeah let's just just get it load them all get it up no, just <laughs> get it over get through it yeah, you know? it's gonna suck but it'll be all right it's better than this week's gonna suck yeah i'd rather cram them all into one day than just like spread them throughout the week oh it's it's such a downer you know how often are you tattooing now consistently Every Wednesday, Thursday, because my I have my kids half the time when yeah, I have yeah. them. I'm dad. I'm not. I'm not a tattoo artist. I'm not a piercer. I'm dad. So Wednesday, Thursday, I almost never have them, and then every other weekend. 
And then those weekends, it depends what they got going on. You know, like before I flew down here, my son had his first baseball practice. So I was like, all right, let me go. And next thing you know, now I'm assistant coach of his baseball team. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, got roped into that yeah, one. Yeah, my arm's killing me today. I must have thrown <laughs> a thousand balls. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready for that. Yeah. It's cool. Ooh. All right. The McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, the McDonald's is catching up with me. <laughs> Well, I wanted it's to talk cool. about apprenticeships. Um, so, I mean, your apprenticeship was 20 years ago, yeah, right? Yeah. Mine was like a little over 10 and yours is now. So we kind of have a couple decades <laughs> here, yeah, which right. I think is cool. Um, I, everyone knows about cams, how it's like super easy and soft. I want to, I want to talk about yours. I don't even know if I know anything about yours or, or you're even just coming into the industry. Oh, mine? Mine was... Because uh, it was for Van, right? It was for Van. <laughs> So <laughs> I, I don't even like I don't even like speaking his name. My Does he still tattoo? I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. All of a sudden one day somebody came in to like, yo, that shop's closed. And I drove down there and I was like, it's closed. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and he just in the middle of the night disappeared. And I heard all kinds of rumors and stuff. And I don't know the truth. So right. I'm not going to say any of it. But my apprenticeship was definitely different. Um, one, he, he looked at me as just dollars. It seemed like. Right. I walked in there. He knew a lot of people in the area knew me. It was a town over from where I grew up. And I did three free tattoos, and then I did a full price one. Gotcha. You know, I, th I thought I was tattoo prodigy. Right. You know, because it was <laughs> like, oh, that's it? Yeah. And uh, I looked back at that work, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I tattooed if you're you, out there, if charge if I tattooed you 17 to 20 years ago, my sincerest apologies. <laughs> Up. <laughs> so what, what you like walked in the shop and you were like hey i want to so i had walked in there a few years earlier wanted to do it and like most people didn't have the money for an apprenticeship so started yeah. saving and then when i finally had the money uh walked through and, and started up and in the beginning it was traditional you know learn how to clean and, and do all that um and then it was a lot of grunt work like i'd spend time in a closet that was probably no bigger than this table yeah making needles like yeah grouping needles soldering that together then soldering the needle bars with the door closed because you didn't want a health inspector coming in and seeing what you were doing you know there were it, and that was just to save the 10 you know he was so cheap he wanted to save the 10 cents a needle right. from yourself and that was my job like you you don't know how easy you have it no yeah you know? i hear from the old guys all the time like you don't know what it's but, like to solder needles but you you really have no idea what it's like to be an apprentice back then and, and the ones that I have now and, and that apprentice under my artist now they have no idea how good they have it you know and, and, for, and you especially because of the podcast and yeah. the TikToks and all the social media stuff he does very like, lucky you are yeah. and I don't know if you realize that but he's giving you a head start that 99.9% .9 of tattoo artists that are here now never got and in the future won't get so if he says wash his car, you better ask him what kind of soap to use. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're, uh, we're going to make needles after this. Yeah. I'll show you. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to save money. <laughs> I need black claws are adding up. Soldering iron and a Coke can. Yeah. That's all I need. Yeah. Yeah, Coke can. That's how we group needles, man. Yeah. This is messed up. And then, so you're like in there. He finally said yes. He Was he charging for apprenticeship? Yeah. What was he charging? So at that time, it was 7500 he only charged me six grand, um, and that was because you know he knew that I knew a lot. I of people. That, I that seems like, like that pretty steep. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it was twenty years ago. Six grand was a lot of money, right? You know, well, I hear people that charge like that much for apprenticeships nowadays, like within that realm, like the five like to 10, ten grand, the five to ten grand range. I charge mm -hmm. right now ten. I've been thinking yeah. about raising it up, um, partially because everybody's a tattoo artist now. I don't know yeah. what happened the tv shows and everything but everybody wants to be a tattooer now it's cool and it's fun and that's you know what they're thinking everybody wants to be insta famous yeah so i've been thinking about raising it uh, i've always been one of the less expensive apprenticeships uh, purely because i wanted to have my pick of people when people came in looking i didn't want to lose somebody who i thought was a quality person and going to become a quality tattooer to somebody else over a thousand bucks yeah and then how long were you like just cleaning the shop until you're actually tattooing <sighs> man tough to really remember i'd say probably only a handful of months uh two or three months really uh, and again primarily he was just trying to push me yeah you know it was it was like 
get him charging, get his friends in here, get the people who know him in here, and make money. You know, in hindsight, back then, again, I thought it was Tattoo Prodigy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, thought, I, was, yeah. I was, thought I was the man. <laughs> right. You know, and I was far from it. it. wasn't It wasn't really until about two years after that when people were, for whatever reason, coming back to get more tattoos from me, and I'd see an old piece on them, and I'd, I'd have to trick them into letting me fix them. I'd see it. And, you know, ah, needs a little touch. Like, oh, let me you, add some shading. I can, I can fix that up for you. No, I love it. It's yeah. great. Oh, it's the best. You changed my life. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. no. I hate looking at that and thing. I said, well, you see that little holiday in there, that little gap? <laughs> let me let me just touch that spot. And once I touch one spot, Reline the whole fucking ah, tattoo. so much darker now. Let <laughs> right. me just hit the whole thing, and then I'd just blast through the whole piece. And then... You know, I was trying to fix all those mistakes. You know? Yeah, I didn't know any better. And how old were you when you were at this time? I was twenty four. Nice, twenty four. Yeah. And then you stayed there for a little bit, right? Yeah, I was there about six years, set maybe six and a half years, and then uh, we had a little bit of a falling out. Um, you know, the weird part is before I had children, uh, your mind is closed off to certain things, and what I didn't realize was. I don't. I don't care. I was, he was a dirtbag. Yeah. You know, like if if you were sixteen to thirty six and you had a pretty face and a thin waist, he was tattooing you. And I had a client of mine who had come in to get a tattoo by me, and he's like, "You're not doing it. I'm, I'm here to make money and here to work. That's my appointment." And I already told her, "You're not doing it." And next thing you know, they're arguing because she wants me to do it. He wants to do it. He calls her a bitch, and I'm like. That's it. I had had my first daughter two weeks earlier, and that, and that turned a switch on where I realized what kind of guy he really was. I do actually remember that. Like, some of my friends, even. Or he would, like, take them on, like, as apprentice. Yeah, he, he would he would do these things where he'd be like, oh, you can be the shop girl. Yeah. You know, and I'll trade you tattoos for work or whatever it was. But, you know, it, it's it. I'm embarrassed to say it because, you know, I think I'm a pretty respectful person. But to see the way he was treating women, yeah. I wasn't down with it. And uh, when I had my first daughter, I took a couple weeks off. And when I came back, this was literally the first, not that incident wasn't, but the first day back, I had went home and I was married at the time. And I said, I can't work over there no more. Yeah. And it was about maybe only two or three weeks later that this incident had happened. And I just walked in. I said, hey, good luck to you. Keep my name out your mouth. I'm going to pack my stuff. I'm going to go. And uh, I bounced. To, to open me. your own shop, right? Yeah, I, that was always an idea, and uh, I had been. It's funny back then I had no money. You know, I was I opened that first shop on my kids' college money. Yeah, what little money that was, <laughs> and six credit cards. Like opened up six windows, filled out the whole apps. And yeah, it was like send, 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 send. They were all approved, and then <laughs> I just started buying gear and storing it all in my uh, screened-in porch until I found nice. a location. You know, I did it completely backwards. Wasn't there? Were you like associated with a bar or something? I used to own a bar, uh, so I went to college. I did all that, and that's fine. But you know, the the suit and tie life, not really my thing. The corporate yeah, world. yeah. <laughs> I was never uh, a kiss ass or any of that. I am who I am. You know, you respect me, I respect you, and I'll give you everything I got. But if you mess with me or you screw me, you disrespect me, I'm gonna be the worst guy you ever met. And I got no problem with that either. It's all up to you. And that that corporate world was not my scene. Yeah. I was successful at it. I made a lot of money doing it, but I was very unhappy. Every, yeah. every day was miserable. It was yeah, soul. Yeah. It stole my soul. Yeah. You know? It wasn't for me. So uh, I had opened the bar. I'd always wanted to do that, and I used that corporate money that I'd made to do that. And that was right around the time I had started my apprenticeship. Tattooing for me was not a career path. 20 years ago, it wasn't a career path. Yeah, you something know, fun was, to do. It was a hobby. Yeah. I was going to tattoo make a couple bucks. You know, I was bouncing and bartending and DJing at night with the corporate job. This was going to replace that. I was going to have my own bar, and during the day I'll tattoo some people, and hopefully I'll meet somebody cool along the way. And I was fortunate enough, I guess I did good enough work that people started referring me to others, and it kind of snowballed, and the next thing you knew, I was leaving that shop and uh, opening up the first one in Wharton. Yeah. yeah. And when I came over, how long had the shop been open? Oh, man, you came over pretty early, um, I had helped teach a couple guys, you know, at the other shop, but I had never really had, uh, my own apprentice. You were yeah. the first one. That's why, like, I check in on you and I, like, yeah, yeah. like, you know, for people that don't know, don't know, like, John's like extended family to me. He's like a kid, my son, you know, at least that's how I feel. I don't know how you feel, but that's how I feel about it. Like, yeah, your, your personal life and success and business and everything else, like, uh, 
for me, I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of you. So uh, you were the first one, and you came over pretty early, man. I probably was only open six months to a year. Yeah. You know, and I was excited to have you. Yeah, and it's funny because, like, you kind of got me at the worst time <laughs> in my <laughs> life. You know? yeah. what, what was your first, like, <laughs> John walks in. What, what was your first thought? I don't have any what money. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck to teach anybody. <laughs> well, so to I be was, honest, you know, like I just, I just figured out how to open up a tattoo parlor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, well, because I do remember walking in and everything looked like really nice and new. It was brand that, new. Yeah, I definitely remember that. <laughs> and I was in like community college, and uh, I was dating Monica with the twins. Right. Yeah, God, and I forgot about them. Yeah, and I think someone, either you or Kelly, or someone was tattooing them. And I'm in college, like, literally just standing outside of whatever class I'm supposed to be in, like, selling drugs. And <laughs> Monty's like, or Monica's like, yo, like, you got to fucking do something with your life. And she was like, oh, you know, I, I talked to Tran or someone at the shop, and they said yeah. they might be able to help you out with a job. Uh, you know, and I had been, like, scratching here and there, always interested but thinking like, holy shit, like this could be a thing like I do for the rest of my life and an identity I could take on. And then we met and you were kind of like, yeah, like, let's give it a shot. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. And I remember I was with my buddy Mike, um, who was like kind of my running partner with like getting high. Um, and we were driving down. uh you know, to Patterson. This was like a day or two after in the car. And we were both very aware of our situation that like, like what we were doing sucked and like something needed to change. And I remember telling Mike like, yo, I think I'm going to become a tattoo artist. And he was like, oh my God, dude, like you're, you're going to be somebody. But, like, be somebody in the sense of, like, someone that had a job. Right, right, right. You know, nothing, like, right. crazy. Yeah. Just, 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 like, just you're not, not going to be Yeah, like, loser. not this. Yeah. Like, this is your way out. And that, and I don't remember a lot of stuff from that time, but I vividly, like, remember that conversation with him and thinking, like, holy shit, like, this this could be my way out of this life. You know, and, and look, in, in some ways, it, it kind of puts you down that road, right? Like yeah. It, it puts you there. I remember you coming in, you were excited. You were clear-eyed in the beginning, yeah. You know, and uh, things were progressing, and then the hard stuff happened. You know, and, and that was a tough, tough decision for me, and it was hard. Um, you know, I, I don't know how much you want to go into this. Dude, we I want to know it yeah. all. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll tell you. Look, John's coming in. He's doing all the little things. He's doing everything he's supposed to do as an apprentice, and then all of a sudden, I just watched him deteriorate. You know, and and. People in the shop are telling me things that are going on, and, you know, we got the cameras, and I'm looking at the cameras, and uh, there was a day I was off, and he was in, and I watched him move a Dunkin' Donuts coffee cup about eight times in 30 seconds. Empty cup. Put it here, walk there, come back, pick it up, reposition it here, and it was real fucking strange. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, this dude's fucked up. <laughs> so he was off a day or two after that, and, and I had told you from the start, you know, like, he told me a situation, you know, and then some wild stories, man. The one right. on the parkway and, and the seatbelt. Yeah, yeah. Like, I remember all that shit. Yeah. And a little oversharing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I had come in and I'd, I got one of those at home tests. And uh, yeah, I remember meeting with your parents, yeah. having that real conversation with them. And, you know, that, that was hard for me because I, I really liked you and I knew you were extremely talented artistically. So, but all in all, look at it now. I'm glad it all played out the way it did. You know, I'm, I guess yeah. I'm, I'm the guy who fired John Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> which, was, which was the right call. So, like, from my end of it, like, when I had been in the shop that first week, I was, like, I, like, I stopped, u like, using any drugs. Yeah. I was like, this is more important. Yeah. You know, and I stopped, like, answering all those people and whatever. I didn't really have a solution yet on, like, how to stay, stop. Yeah. But it was, like, a great, like, th like this was the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Like, holy shit, there's an option for me, you know? And then, you know, and, like, it fell, and I hadn't found, you know, solutions I had had now yet and whatever. 
And, dude, I remember, like, the day, because you were, like, I feel bad, because, I, like, I know that had to be tough, like, on your end. But I remember the day, like, you brought in the test, and you're like, yo, just fucking be honest with me, <laughs> and we so can like, keep this going. No, I, and you know? I'll be real with you, that's, that's huge, you know, for me, is honesty. Like, I don't like being lied to, because right. I feel like when you lie to somebody, you're basically saying, I think you're dumb. Right. You know, I think you're stupid and you're not going to know what's up. And and we had had those conversations yeah. outside, out back, smoking yeah. cigarettes. Like, yo, if you ever fuck up, if you ever make that wrong decision or you go down that road again, just tell me. I'll help you. We'll work, we'll work through it. We'll get to the finish line together. Just be straight with me. And uh, I remember you came in and I had I had it in a plastic bag down below my desk. I'm like, yo, is anything going on with you? No, nah, everything's good. No, for real. Like, now's the time. Like, Tell me what's up. Nope, everything's good. Come on, John. You didn't have a beer somewhere. You didn't smoke a little weed, a little something. Nope, everything's good. You sure about that? Yeah, and I had you sign a little piece of paper. Right. <laughs> I, I typed up some shit that was like, I'm going to honor this test. Right, I right. know it's not a laboratory, whatever. And then uh, you remember the games you were trying to play, how you were not, you didn't want to piss in that cup? No, I don't remember. I'm like, all right, let's go piss in the cup. He's like, I had told everybody in the shop when I came in that day, I said, at 1 o'clock, you're going to go to Home Depot you're going to go to get lunch. Everybody's going to have an excuse. And it's going to be John and I. Because I didn't want to embarrass you. I didn't yeah, want to do yeah, that yeah. in front of everybody. And uh, they all bounced out. And I'm like, all right, let's go piss in this cup. And he's like, oh, I don't have to. All right. <laughs> and, like, 20 minutes goes by. I get a phone call. And I'm, you know, expressive ink. And he's like, he's like I'm going to go piss now. I'm like, sit the fuck down. <laughs> sit, the fuck, sit the fuck down. You're not going anywhere. So I get off the phone. I'm like, you got to piss. Like, ah, I don't have to anymore. I'm like, well, there's a water cooler over there. <laughs> Start drinking and finally did. I was like, I'm going to put my back to the door. Door stays open. Don't yeah, flush. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah, use yeah. the sink. Nothing. Well, that shit lit up like a Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 10 minutes for results. John's test was like fucking making sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Thing sizzling. <laughs> but even after that, like, from my memory, like, we had a good talk, just in the sense that, like, because I understood the situation. Like, I remember, like, I was like, yeah, fucked up, obviously. You know, like, the cup is whatever. And you're like, well, listen, like, this is what I have to do, and I only have to do that because that's what you chose. Well, and, and, and that's, that was, that's real. That's, that's the truth. You know, if the trust is broken and it was nothing personal, Look, tattooing is a big deal, whether you realize it or not. What we do is forever. You know, cover-ups, whatever, fine. You can get shit removed now. But you're, you're changing somebody, you know, and, and there's a lot of trust. This isn't a subway where you, you put mayo on it, make a new sandwich, whatever, no big deal. Like, this is real. This is for forever, and these people are trusting you. And if I can't trust you to do that and be honest with me, um, with those things, how am I going to trust you with my business? Clients, this is not just yeah. me that it would affect there's other people who work for me, and they have families, and they have children. So there's a ripple effect. One, one bad person in the shop brings the whole shop down, and that costs everybody money and opportunity. Yeah. So, and, and I also felt, you know, for what it's worth that you needed, and, and I don't know. Look, I just had a very real conversation with you and your parents. I, right. you know, and maybe, you know, it was a blessing in disguise you came to me, and I had a degree in psychology and whatever else. But... I felt like you needed that kick in the ass and that wake up call to really kind of say like you fucked up and you lost this opportunity, you know, now you got to go do the hard work because that's the hard work which yeah. you had to go through. You know, the apprenticeship is what it is, but uh, look where you are now, you know, right. so you know, lucky for everybody, I guess that it worked out the way it did. Yeah. And, I, and after that, I like, you know, it took a couple of days to kick in and I was like, damn, like I lost the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Like, I lost everything. That's how it felt, you know? Starting back. Yeah, and then after that is when I went to Florida and got clean. Yeah. Like, literally, right after that. Was that was, like, what made your decision? It's like, I'm going to go to Florida. I'm going to get clean. I'm gonna well, yeah, clothes. it was like, there's nothing here for me in Jersey. And, like, it had been recommended a million times to leave the state, get out of the environment, get away from the friends. And, like, I didn't want to, That was, you know? Do you remember the conversation we had before the drug test where those guys had coming in a lot and you were, you, I don't know, you might have been tattooing them or they were just hanging out. And I was like, listen, change your phone number. Right, Stop hanging right. out with them. You see them in the mall. Hey, what's good? Keep it moving. Yeah. No, we can't hang out. I'm real busy. And just, you can be cordial and keep them arms like the way because yeah. 
you put two or three people in that situation with each other, when one domino falls, they all start to drag each other down. If they're early on in that process, right. you know, down the road is a different situation. Um, and that was my fear. And I, and I kept saying to you, like, oh, you got to get away from these people because they're going to bring you down. And you're like, oh, no, it's cool. We went through a lot. And, you know, and I get all that and I hear all that. But at the end of the day, you got to do what's right for you. Because if you can't yeah. take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because, like, when I left, the other two stopped hanging out. Everyone kind of split and everyone got clean. That's awesome. Uh, like me and those two other guys, like everyone has almost 10 years clean and actually is doing extremely well <laughs> <laughs> by not hanging out. Like I'll check in, they're scattered across the country, whatever. Uh, but sometimes you don't think about that either. Like, yo, me not cutting it off is selfish to them as well. You know? Yeah. I, I guess I never looked at it that way, but yeah, because if it, you could be the one that's that the first one that falls and yeah. that down. Yeah, whatever, whatever it is. And then I, when I came down here, oh, it was so funny, dude, because it was, like, exactly what I deserved. Because I got clean, and I was like, yo, I want to, like, keep tattooing. Right. Right? <laughs> and, but, like, who wants to hire an apprentice that's done, like, you know, a handful of free tats? No one. No yeah. one wants to hire Freshly that person. Clean. Yeah, so I found this, like, old biker, and he was like, well, I'm not going to, like, hire you, but I'll, like, apprentice you. And it was, like, a... It was a rough apprenticeship. I remember you, you know? telling me a little about that. It was yeah. old school, old school. Like it, it, that apprenticeship made mine seem like, oh wow, yeah, pretty easy. I think it was illegal, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long were you apprenticing under Trent? I think a year, about a year. Yeah, so it was a good little God, chunk. It's, it's, yeah, we had there. we had spent a good amount of time together. Um, I remember when you came in with your mother to tell me you were going to Florida. I was very happy to hear that. And then I remember you came back that Christmas, and you were clean. You guys yeah, came yeah. in, and I walk in, and they're like, oh, uh, somebody's up front to see you. And I'm like, what? And as I'm walking, somebody's like, John's up front. I'm like, John who? Right. And it was you and your mom. I and uh, and I was like, I was just really, it made me really happy to see you doing well. Um, I care, man. I give yeah. a shit about you. Um, I care about all my people. But you were the first one, you know what I mean? It, was, yeah. it meant a lot to me to see you doing well. And I worry about you. So every time I say, like, how you doing? Yeah, I mean it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's cool, man, because you really have, like, stayed in touch since then, you know, which, to be honest, I don't, like, I don't do with a lot of people, and I think it goes back to really just, like, the mentor-apprentice relationship, yeah. which I don't know if it's, like, cause I try to, like, instill it in everyone, like, yo, this is a really important relationship, you know, to, to have, or that's what I want it to be. You yeah, know, and, and that's that's what it was taught to me as, you know, and just like you were willing to help me out with like whatever I needed, like that's what I want to give, like when I mentor like other people, yeah. like beyond the artwork, like if you're struggling, like if you got something going on, and and I always tell Cam like, you know, and Logan and and whoever, like most of this stuff that like I'm applying, like I'm not just making it up. It's like things that were were taught, you know. Look, it, it it's important, you know. Like uh, before the audio issue, we were saying about the cleanliness and the yeah. clean and sterile environment, and then line drawings, and they got to be clean because you got to trust that stuff. Like there's a process. It's not to make your life harder. It's not to make you miserable, although sometimes that is a little fun to make you guys miserable. <laughs> Obviously. Um, but it, it's important stuff because just like a house, you can't put the roof on without the foundation or the walls. Right. And you got to build all that up. So th that relationship's important. Trust is important. Uh, what I find now, especially with these apprentices, is there's no reciprocation of that. You know, they, they look at it like, well, I paid you, so you owe me. Mm. And I'm going to be you know, the next ink master and I'm going to be the next, you know, great tattooer and Insta famous. And it's like, if you, I'm, I'm going to tell all, any tattooers with less than seven years, definitely five. You don't know shit. You don't know shit. So stop acting like you know something and stop acting like you're a hot shit and you're a big deal because you ain't, you ain't, you haven't lived it yet. You haven't put in the work or the time yet. And I don't care how talented you are and how good you are. There's a lot more to it. So, you know. Yeah, and I don't think, like, at any point you should ever be acting like that, you know? It, it's wild, man, and, and it, it, I, I, see, I get people, they, they go through the apprenticeship, and then they bounce, or they think they've hit this certain level, and, and all this stuff, and it's like, 
you've got so much more to go because you haven't even scratched the surface yet. You, you're still not pu- pulling solid lines and, and sinking ink. Like you, there's just so much more to it. And it, it's repetition, it's experience, it's practice. And, you know, and I told you then, and I tell everybody now, check your ego at the door. Look, I'm, I'm doing this in over 19 years now. I, I'm not the world's greatest tattooer. I'm not a gift to the tattoo world. I'm just a guy who's trying to make a living and hopefully does a great tattoo that day. And I'm only as good as the last one I did, you know, and that's all I can strive to do is get a little better every day. And uh, hopefully two years from now, I look at the work I did yesterday and I go, oh man, that's terrible. Because if I think it's terrible, I grew as an artist and a tattooer. And the only reason I'm still tattooing is because I'm still learning. Because if I knew it all and I thought I knew it all, I got a six month shelf life. I'll get bored out of my mind, you know? So you guys who think you know shit, you don't. Keep learning. Stay humble, please. There's enough great tattooers. Everybody's the best. That's all I ever hear. I'm the best. They come in for job. I'm the best. I'm like, I'll let your work tell me the fucking story. <laughs> I don't need you to tell me. You know? Yeah, it does kind of seem like the wave now, everyone's kind of spreading out, like, individually. Like, a lot of, like, private studios, a lot of, like, I, I don't know, I... Because now I'm, like, thinking back, like, you know, Expressive Inc. and, like, early times, like, there was, like, groups. Like, more, yeah. like, kind of groups that would, you know, because Skinny Scott, you know, like, we all started at, like, Fat Mermaid. And we, we just kind of, like, made a bunch of friends at, at a few shops. Yeah. And we all hung out and we, like, chilled. And it wasn't this, like, singularity. like it, And we progressed. Like, oh, this dude over here, you know, having this going on at his shop and event. Let's all go over. Even the shop owners and, like, close down. And I don't see that as much anymore. No. There's a handful of shops that, you know, I get along with and I know the owners from. And I respect the work that they do. Um, It doesn't stop them from reaching out and trying to steal your your artists. (laughs) Um, Dirtbag move. You know who you are. (laughs) You could have called me. (laughs) <laughs> um, but uh it, when i started tattooing you had a handful of shops and that's what it was now i, I find it funny when i see all these little pop-up shops and, and look I've, I've got two places in the first one i opened over 13 years ago and i've seen about 20 come and go in yeah. the area between now and then and everybody thinks they can do it and they they don't realize how much there is to do outside of the shop but what I'm seeing now is a lot of these artists, they want to do this uh, appointment-only stuff and come and go when they want to. And and it seems to be the artists who tell me they're all about the art are the ones that are really all about the money. Mm-hmm. And they're jumping ship for 5%, 10% or because somebody's buying ink, you know? And it's yeah. like, you're really going to throw all that away? Uh, my crew, we're like family, you know? And we have our moments and we argue and we disagree with things or get, don't get along for a minute. Yeah, like family. But yeah, it's every family. <laughs> that's family. Yeah, yeah. You just know? you work through it. So grow together. And that's why, like going back to like the open the shop and giving people opportunity to manage it and make a higher percentage. Or yeah, maybe even a revenue share down the road or something. That's that's what I want. I want this to be family. I, I like the familiarity of it. I like the comfort of it, and the trust that comes with that. And to give these people the opportunity to kind of have the best of both worlds, where you're still a part of a crew, and and your people, but you can have kind of your own thing. Yeah, and I think it gives uh, not only opportunity for growth, but, like, the option for growth. I see yeah. a lot of shops where it's like, cool, you come in, you're on this percentage, and that's just what it is forever until you leave. Look, there's you some, th- but, but there's some people that are only worth that much. Correct, correct. You know, I, I'm big on, look, I see the things you've done with social media, right? When I hit you up and ask you questions, yeah. you were nice enough to invite me to come down and get an inside look and do this with you. I'm trying to grow my business and do those things, not just for me and not just for the the new revenue, but to expose my artists to it, to give them those opportunities, to bring more people in the door for them. And that's something that I don't think many of them realize is just how much work and effort goes into things behind the scenes. And I think they look at it like always doing it for himself. No, I like my free time, you know, (laughs) limited if there's ever any free time that I get I'm doing this for everybody collectively and all I ask is that you reciprocate that you put in the best effort if I put a post up share the post mm-hmm. is it that hard you yeah, know it's two clicks exactly so it's those things so the people who don't take that little extra step 
and they just stay status quo with it, well, you're just going to make status quo. Right. You know, I don't, I don't owe you anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough because, like, as as shop owners, I feel like we'll try 20 things, like 20 new ideas, and maybe one of them works, yeah. and then people really only see the one thing. And they think it's, it's the so only easy. thing that worked. Yeah. Oh, like, oh so you only easy, did yeah. one thing to help me out. <laughs> it's so, so easy. So easy. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Never mind all the time and money that was spent going into it. Like, oh, like, no, you don't understand yeah. the headaches, the phone calls, the emails, the meetings, yeah. you know, and, and all that go into it. Like, they just think, like, oh, just unlock the door. Yeah. The money just flies in. Or even just like, we're like, because when we even started the social media stuff and the filming, it was just like, you know, staying a l- couple minutes after work and like yeah. just filming here and there. Everyone was laughing at us. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's like, we have a whole day dedicated to this stuff now. And like how much it's just grown and like how much. Like, and a whole team. You, yeah. And you never stop putting more right. into it. Like it just started like one like, day we were just filming after appointments, like 15 minutes after work. And now it's like we have a whole day yeah, dedicated man. to this but, stuff. But let me ask you this. In life, anything you've ever done that's become successful, did it take just 15 minutes? No. Did it take just you alone? No. Yeah, it you takes. work at it, yeah. right? Yeah. I tell everybody, you want to have success? You only need yeah. two things. And you're going to have and sacrifice. You're going to have failures like along Absolutely. the way too. And it's Absolutely. just just keep per, like There's persistence be, and keep pushing. There's going to be plenty of flops. But you're looking for the one thing that clicks and it works. And it might not, might work today. It might not. And down the road, it might not work, but it might. So you sometimes you end up revisiting these things, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because I've always, like, seen what you do for your business model and even, like, sacrificing your own time of tattooing to, like, work on the shop. And I've always respected that so much because that's, like, what I try to do here just in the sense of, like, I'm the one that decided to open a shop. Therefore, it's my responsibility to run it, right? Yeah, and uh, it's tough because, you, you look, I got into this to tattoo. Right, right. I didn't get into yeah. this to cut checks and, and have meetings and drug you know, test and, and people, and drug <laughs> test people, you know, and, and, and film videos and all that. I got into it because for me, again, this was supposed to be a part time thing. This was, you know, yeah. a side hustle. A hobby. You know what I mean? A hobby that I make a couple bucks doing and hopefully meet some interesting people. It's now that enveloped was, your whole life. That was the goal. <laughs> yeah. And now it's consumed me. And, and this world, this life is different than everything else. And God bless my girlfriend. Uh, she understands it. Her family has a business. So she's, she's in that life and she gets it. Like I I don't, I'm a slave to the shop. I'm a slave to the shop. There's no other way to describe it. Like something breaks. I got to go down the shop. Something's not working. Somebody calls out and I don't have coverage. I got to go to the shop. You know, there's a problem with the plumbing. I got to make the phone calls to the landlords and the plumbers and everything else. And I got to go to the shop. So you're a slave to that business and the hours aren't nine to five. Mm-hmm. And there were plenty of shoot hell the first seven years of Wharton. I was working 80 to 100 hours a week in the shop. Never mind the back end yeah. stuff. Tattooing mm-hmm. 80 to 100 hours a week. And I mean, there'd be days that I'd go in at 9 a.m. And I'd be there till 6 a.m. Because somebody came in and wanted this whole back piece or their whole chest or whatever it was, and they had to have it right then and there, yeah. and it had to be done in one session, whether it was bragging rights or time constraints or whatever it was. And by the time you finish, like you know, you're on point the whole time. But when it's over and you're trying to figure out money, all of a sudden you become special. You can't you can't figure nothing out. You're yeah, like, I don't know. Just what do you got? Just hand it all <laughs> yeah. over. My brain hurts. You know? Just throw something at me. You know, just give it to me and get out. <laughs> you know, so you you. You sacrifice a lot, and and nowadays, my, every one of my employees will tell you the one thing you don't do is waste my time. Don't waste my time. I don't have enough of it, and it's the only thing I can't buy. So you better respect it. And if you're coming to me with something, it better be real. Wow, this shirt is actually really nice. If you haven't already, you need to check out the Model Citizen Apparel dot com. It has the best tattoo clothing I've ever seen. And I'm quite a critic when it comes to fashion, clothing, whatever. The design has to be cool and the material has to be comfortable, at least form fitting. They have a range of styles from vintage to modern. They're continuing to work with new artists featuring new designs and articles of clothing. You need to check out this company, themodelcitizenapparel.com, or you can check out their social media, which is Model Citizen Apparel. It's the best. 
to wake up earlier. This is a solution. I'm, I'm working on the, the sleep schedule thing right now. It's tough. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> hard hat. It's a building process. Give me a hard hat. You should buy him a rooster. Get an alarm oh, clock. Let's get him yeah. a rooster. Yeah, that'd be good. This is Adrian's bird if call. If this dies, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> like taking care of the egg. Yeah, you know, like bro, my <laughs> baby. I'm like, yo, you wouldn't believe it. My rooster slept in, bro. <laughs> John, I got so high, I ate the rooster. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, oh. that's good. Yeah. Nah, but you got to do your part, man. Yeah, you got to be here when you're supposed to be. You know, I got, I got four main rules. It's be there when you're supposed to be. Put 100% in everything you do. Yeah. Don't come to work higher drunk. Get along with your coworkers. We're all adults. It's like his one you rule. Know? On time. It's huge, man. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Put break it. <laughs> every time. You should have said one consistent. rule. Like, <laughs> <laughs> his one rule, I fuck up every day. My favorite is when I have somebody who's consistently late, and then a walk-in comes in, and they're doing nothing, and they're like, oh, no, I don't, I don't want it. I don't, you, you do it. You do it. And then the end of the night comes, and I got a fistful of money. And they're like, oh, I made no money. Right. I don't know what money. I'm going to do. Oh, what yeah. am I going to do? And I'm like, you're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you mean this money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm going to break you off something now. <laughs> you did the bare minimum and failed. <laughs> How do you make so much money? I work. I'm sorry. Uh, oh. I that dude, dude. Dude, I get that shit all the time. People are like, give it to them. They, they probably need it more. No, you need it. Yeah, I know their <laughs> numbers. You need yeah, you need it. If you had an apprentice, how would you treat him, Cam? The same way you tro- like treated me. What does that mean? I'd be a little bit meaner, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that blows my mind. <laughs> no, I'd be like so cool, but I'd just be like, you know, it'd, it'd be like something super stupid that would just like piss me off. You just have flashbacks of your days. Yeah, <sighs> I'm like. John would have yelled at me for this. I'm going to yell at you worse. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think I'm, I think I'm getting softer in my old age, you know? Uh, along with the crankiness, I'm getting softer and it's because everybody's got these feelings now. Yeah. You know, yeah. growing up when I grew up, your parents in the neighborhood just beat them out of you, so you're yeah. just, like, numb to that. You know, there was no, like, oh, this hurts my feelings. Like, now I find myself, like, catering to that stuff. And, you're, like, uh, scared some to my, hurt them. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're scared to, not scared, I'm not scared to hurt them, but I'm like, all right, I have to consider this and how they're going to take it. And I treat every employee different. Each, each artist I treat completely different. And it's not favoritism. It's just I know how people are going to respond to certain things. So, personality So, based. Yeah. yeah. So one person I can talk to, and I yeah. know the job's going to get done. The other one I have to yell at, because if I talk to them, it's going to go right over their head or they don't think I'm serious. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely getting point. softer in these apprenticeships too, which... Part of me is kind of like, ah, whatever. And part of me is like, <laughs> fuck. Right, you know, right. I want to kick you in the face right now. <laughs> yeah, I just started doing that in the last couple of years. And what I mean is like treating people different, yeah. like around different. Because w- originally I was like, no, I want to be equal. I want to be the same to everyone. But it didn't, I didn't really like the results I was getting from it. Well, it, it, yeah, because you're not going to get the results you want. Right. You know, you'll get one person, but the other two... Like what? What don't you get? Yeah. So, like, how come you're nice to them and you're mean to me? And it's like, well, because when I'm mean to you, it responds well. <laughs> yeah, because, because when I'm nice to you, you still don't do the yeah. fucking job I asked. <laughs> oh, because I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sometimes plays into it too. There's been people I don't like. Right, Kyla. <laughs> Bro, the oh, wait, one. Why can't we be curled up like that during our podcast? This is like the one podcast I wanted you to pay attention in, especially. T- John's upbringing, or at least his. Yeah, you were like you, you on Tinder, bro. <laughs> you were like ten when this was happening, and I was hanging out with your dad. I think I heard her <laughs> whisper when you were saying the whole drug test thing. She was like, "Been there." <laughs> <laughs> I think I was probably more nervous than John was in that moment because I didn't know how it was going to be received, and uh, I don't. I don't get too nervous often. Maybe I was more nervous about what the results were going to be because I, I knew what was going on. Right, right. I just didn't want to believe it. And I was really, really hopeful that you were going to be like, yeah, man, I fucked up. Yeah. You know, and that's all I needed. That's all I really needed. But, again, all for the best because, you know, who knows where you'd be and what you'd be doing now and if you'd be with me or 
Yeah. Screw everything up. Yeah, I just didn't have the tools at the time. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't have the, the ability to be honest. So it might sound like a cop-out, but I just didn't have experience with it. Yeah. And, like, when I would get scared, you know, I would resort on these, like, negative tools to, that I yeah, use or whatever. Back, you know, what I was fucking nervous about is one time you guys sent me out for pizza, and I dropped it. <laughs> Hold on, because this story just popped up and in my head. Yo, so like Instant the whole, sh- the whole, imagine the whole shop is like counting on you. Like you'll get food <laughs> orders and stuff for like one person. The whole shop ordered a pizza, <laughs> and mind you, like you just walked outside and you went next door, and that's yeah. where the pizza was. It wasn't like it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't far. A fucking tracker. No, like and walk I, into your car. And yeah, and I'm like holding the the pizza, <laughs> and it's really windy out. <laughs> <laughs> and like it blows into my face, the box hit my face, and it, it opens and like spins off, and the pizza lands flat. <laughs> and like, yo, in my head, like this pizza is worth like twenty bucks. It's like a million dollars to me. Like I cannot afford to replace this, you know. So I like kind of just flip it back and like put it in the thing. I'm like, what am I gonna do? I'm probably out there for like twenty minutes. Yeah, they'll never notice the He's gravel. <laughs> I probably extra, didn't. Extra crunchy. I probably didn't. I was like, bacon oh, bits are fire. Yo, but it actually, like, yo, it looked good. Like, it, you know, whatever. Oh, this thing was charcoal bro, cooked, And I remember, bro. like, I bring it in. And like I said, I didn't have, like, the ability to be honest. And I was fucking terrified. So I just kind of, like, left it there and went back to, like, what I was doing. <laughs> Hopefully and nobody I remember. This. So I remember one of what's up? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I remember one of the artists. It's like, oh fuck yeah, pizza I'm so hungry. <laughs> and like went over and ate it. And I'm like hyper sensitive to like what's going on, trying to act like I'm not paying attention. And they're like, yo, this pizza is kind of crunchy. <laughs> Their teeth are breaking. They're like, yo, shit. who who got the pizza? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I did. You know, whatever. They're like, did you drop it? And I'm like, oh, they <laughs> Oh, so bad, dude. That's great. Bro, and then I, I, I remember my first, my first day there, like I was so excited. Or first week there, let's say. I was so excited and like ready to do like whatever. And I think you were like, you know what? Like we're going to clean tubes. And I'm like, all right, cool. And you're like, yo, go grab the tubes, whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, not listening at all. <laughs> and you know what an ultrasonic is? <laughs> do, you, do you? Like, that's how you check for babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's literally what's going through my head right now. So it's like uh, you, a, almost like a mini bathtub and you, you know, put oh, your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And it like. It vibrates at a mm-hmm. very high frequency yeah. and knocks off any debris or anything. Oh, yeah. Like, like jewelers using them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Okay. So we'd put all, like, the dirty tubes in there. So, like, you'd scrub them, and then you'd put them in there to, like, finish off the... Cl- getting the crepes. Getting, getting, getting the bullshit off, off yeah. before you would, like, put them, you know, whatever. So it's very dirty, right? Just so think I, every every cartridge you use... Just in a tub. Just in a fucking tub. Okay? <laughs> so all that blood, all that yeah. ink, all that shit. Gross. So it's all in there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get the tubes. Dude, I reach in barehanded. Oh, God. <laughs> and grab oh. all This is in front of you? Not in front okay. of me. But then he's like, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like, huh? I'm like, Kelly's you? like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I said, Did you put your hand there? He's like, no. <laughs> because the way I asked it, the answer was definitely supposed to be no. Yeah. I don't know. Uh-huh. My hands were already bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still don't shake his hand. <laughs> Spray him with cavicide. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what you blacked uh, out. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a tattoo. Were, you know, the pizza thing. Were you there the day that I snapped on the delivery guy with the pizza? No. Uh, I was wondering if maybe that's why you had so much anxiety. Can you break. reenact it with Cam, please? Uh, <laughs> I, I basically held this guy hostage. He quit, like, he quit. Right there on the spot. His, like, his pizza deli- job? Yeah, it was a, it was a Friday thirteenth. We were doing a promo, you know, those promos of the bullshit tattoos, and the pizza comes, and all the cheese is in the corner of the box, <laughs> like it's just all <laughs> down. Yeah. So he comes in, he pulls out the pizza, he puts it there, and I open the box. To, Yo, there's food here for whoever wants it because it's a slam day. I mean, you know, there's been times I've done close to a hundred tattoos on a Friday thirteenth. Yeah. You know, it's just th- there's a line an hour and a half before we open to get in. People wait six hours for a thirteen dollar tattoo. Yeah, like it's wild. Um, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? 
And he goes, like, what? And I go, did you put this under your arm? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. And he's like, well, I got I to go. I'm like, you don't go fucking nowhere. Right. Like, you're not leaving anywhere. And I call the place. And I know the owner. I'm like, come down here now. <laughs> and he's like, what? I'm like, stop what you're doing. Right. Leave your pizzeria and get over here now. I'm, I'm trying dri- to feed my people. Yeah, I'm holding your driver day. ransom. And he's like, what? And he's like, well, where's the driver? I'm like, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> he's here. Over here. He's dead. <laughs> and the owner comes he's the down. And he's he sent like, him a video of the pizza guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's tied up. <laughs> Boy, he's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I go, I should take the pizza out of this box and slap you across the face with it. Yeah. I'm like, you go back now. You stop everybody's work and you bring me back pizza. <laughs> I was wondering if you had, you had been there for that. Everybody, Kelly was like, try and stop. Like, oh my God. Right. He comes back with the pieces. Like, my, my guy quit. You know that? He quit. I'm like, oh, he sucked at his job. Right. You should have fired him. I did you a favor. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. You'll get a kick out of it. You remember uh, Seth and uh, Burger King? Yeah, you can tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> so Seth, uh, this is like prime during my apprenticeship. He sends me to go get him a... Uh, Seth, Seth sends me to go get him a, a Big Mac. He sends me to go get him a Big Mac at McDonald's. McDonald's is right here. So I'm like, it's like apprentice shit. I'm like doing a million things. Day just started. I'm like, text me your order. So he texts me, number one, add bacon with like a Coke. Like didn't say, like didn't specify like whatever he wanted on it. He just texted me number one. I drove to Burger King <laughs> and I got him a Big Mac or a, a Whopper. What instead. was your, what would you say your state of mind was at the time? Feed this motherfucker. Yeah, like, get this food ASAP. What about, I got yeah, What about like your, like did you do Spidey something sense? before you I might have, might have been a little high. <laughs> <laughs> I was now, already at st- the Burger Stoned. I think it was like right at the point. <laughs> I think it was like right at the point where I was like, Damn, I don't, like, because he's hiding, he's smoking weed in the back. I'm like, I don't care if you smoke weed, just, like, be normal, you know? <laughs> so, he, you know, he took that as, like, get as high as you can. <laughs> just be honest about it. Anyway, anyway, anyway he was like, a little high. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he texts me his order. Mind you, Burger King's twice as far as McDonald's is, too. So, I go to Burger King, I come back, and Seth's like, the fuck is this? I'm like, I got you a number one. He's like, bro, I wanted a Big Mac, not a Whopper. And he was just—he was pissed. He was I, like, "How fucking high yeah. are you, you idiot?" Yeah, you would—you would have worn that sandwich and got me a new one. Oh, I got—I got him the wop. I got him his big—I got him his Big Mac. Yeah. I mean, he ate it, but yeah. I mean, like, I mean, he fucked that Whopper up, <laughs> and I still had to go get the fucking Big Mac. It's a prime example of why your apprenticeship is so <laughs> weak. <laughs> I gotta tell you this crazy story how I fucked up. <laughs> Yo, Seth would kill me with the sauces. He's like yeah, the sauce he's connoisseur. Like picky about his, yo, which is weird because like he anything. orders fast food all the time, and then he just throws it all together and just, yeah, yeah. I would I don't know how many times I forgot his sauces because he's that one dude that gets all the weird shit where he's like, I need this on the side, I need this on the side. Tell him to hold this. I need this sauce. Well, I, I need four of those sauces. I'm supposed to say, I write it down. I'm like, this is what I need. Right, just repeat. Here you go. This, and they're yeah. like, uh, I'm like, just read the fucking list. Right <laughs> yeah, it's not that hard. Cam rolls it up and smokes it. Okay. <laughs> I roll up to, I'm at <laughs> Burger King. Bro. I'm like, let me get a Big Mac. <laughs> when I'm tattooing, like the only thing I have to look forward to is the food that I'm going to eat that day. <laughs> That's my break. Like I'll even like, it'll be delivered and I'll be in a good mood. And I'll even be like, I'm going to wait like 20 minutes. Because the next 20 minutes, I'm going to be happy. You know? <laughs> and then once I eat that, the day's over, bro. Like, <laughs> Oh, this is a dumb tattoo I gotta do. You, you know? finish eating, you get back nothing to, to look forward to. On the buck. Get back to it. What do you have to look forward to during your tattoos? <laughs> oh yeah. What do you, what do you, you think about during your tattoos? Yeah. Like, what's you going ever see those head? videos online where it's like what's going on through my mind while tattooing? It's just like stupid music. It's just like Fortnite, <laughs> <laughs> cranking nineties and shit. <laughs> I was like, what if I was a Fortnite character? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think about? Eh, I still get stressed while I tattoo, so it's a lot of just like tattooing. Yeah. So like, it's like a lot of like mumble. build up, like, okay, I'm going to start here. I'm going to line this out. I'll use like, this liner. Yeah. Like curve line, curve line, curve line, straight line, straight line, straight line, <laughs> curve line, curve switching line. Switching you, switching you, switching you. Hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> I walk by uh, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the dip. 
yeah. I just started tattooing to like the beat of the music. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you, like, I feel like when you get into like shading, you start tattooing yeah. like that. Yeah. When you're doing like line work and stuff, it's like, like you start like shading. You're like, so that's you're what like, you're thinking of. Man, I, this music sucks. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I never like, wear <laughs> headphones while I tattoo. And I did for the first time this last week, like at the shop at least. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, fuck it, like, cool client. It was, like, on his leg, so we're not going to really, like, talk that much because they're like, eh, you know. I think I doubled my speed of tattooing. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. It was insane. Because all the, uh, you know, and, and I, that's something that, like, I always wanted to do, and I never yeah. have because I always feel like I'm being disrespectful to the client. And, right. And so many of these people, they want to talk to me, and it's like, you know how it is. They're, you're like their therapist. They, right. Tat therapy. You know, we're like their hairstylist. They come in and they tell, you guys tell us everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. like there's no boundaries. Relationship, like, relationship. Yeah. I, yeah. I got one lady was telling me she's been cheating on her husband for ten years. I've been tattooing her son for ten years. She's <laughs> like, "Don't tell him when you see him." So every time I see this kid, I'm like, "Fuck, your mom's a whore." <laughs> Yo, <laughs> like, yeah, that's weird. Like I'll tattoo people that are friends with each other, and I know. Way more than yeah. I want to know. Yeah. I, I, I can't look at this guy and not think like, "Yo, your mom's banging her coworker." Yeah. And now all you people who I tattoo who has a mom coming to me it might be you. You're Watch like out. you're like tattooing. I hope, boys. I hope I fucked up your day. <laughs> you're tattooing <laughs> boys. They like secretly hate each other. But they're like best yeah, friends. or like, or what they think like contradicts what you know, and it's just like weird. Like the kids, like yeah, my mom loves my dad. You know? and he's like yeah, I hope. she's the best. <laughs> I'm like at head. I yeah, I trust her. <laughs> she never lies. You know, whatever. <laughs> oh. oh, that's a weird. Have you that kid like? Yo, do you look like your dad? Or <laughs> <laughs> have you had that yet or not? Yeah, I've had two of these two chicks that are friends and they come in together, but they fucking hate each other. And it's are, those, are they the only two chicks that oh. are your clients? <laughs> 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 and you just lost two. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you used to have the best clients? <laughs> they get like. St- Small little tattoos in here. I just think it's funny. He's like one of them. You just realized this. It was like I'm not gonna say. <laughs> like one of them will go to the bathroom, and the other one's like, "Fucking bitch." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you guys, are like what? Oh wait, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> hmm? Oh, they. Those are one of them. Yeah, those yeah. two. They like secretly fucking hate each other. And now, but four they come in here. <laughs> they come in here all the time together. Dude, I name drop them. I love them. <laughs> you you like the chaos that they bring. Well, because I don't have to. It never they, negative. They're not your clients. It's yeah. just like Levi, Katie's client. Yeah. I love him. <laughs> yeah. He's ridiculous though. <laughs> but she, <laughs> when she, when he's coming in, she's like, I'm gonna kill myself. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. not happy when he's here. Dude, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like tattooing this one chick. She's like lovely. She's just a pleasure. She's like so polite, sweet. Like I'm as I'm tattooing her, I'm like, I hope. You're my client forever. Yeah. Like, this is ideal. And then her friend comes up and is like, well, how are you feeling? Like, we didn't get any sleep last night. We did, like, all that cocaine, and we were banging that hooker together. And she's like, please stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? You're even cooler than I thought. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, yeah right. Like, uh, yeah, but we got all the secrets. Yeah. yeah, they tell us everything. I forget most of them, but. I've, no, I. You know what's weird is I forget their names. Yeah, yeah. But when they come in, and you see the you know tattoo. their story, you see the tattoo. I remember the entire <laughs> yeah. conversation, but yeah. still like, not their name. I can't tell you how many times I've been. My kids think I'm a local celebrity. They think like I'm hot shit or something. Like we'll be out, and they're like, "Oh, you did my tattoo," and I'm like, "Oh, hey." And I'm <laughs> what like, I do on they're like, like, "See, look," and, and I'll you're like, "Oh." I introduce my children. They're like, "Hey, I'm you know Kate," and I'm like. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then I remember oh, Kanye everything Masters. you told me. Yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah you're cheating on your husband. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> Stay away from my children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. That's me. Uh, yeah, but the names thing I'm terrible with, but they do. They tell us everything. And half the time, I'm just going, wow, really? <laughs> straight line, straight line, straight no. right. <laughs> line. Right. Keep the music. <laughs> no, most of the time, I'm like just into whatever I'm doing, you know, and Oh, well, no, that's not true. Most of the time, I'm probably like, will you please shut the fuck up? Yeah. I have the excuse that I'm, like, still new to tattooing, so I let my clients know. I'm like, yo, if I, like, stop talking, it's because I'm focusing. Right. It's and really just fair. nonsense going that's through fair. my head. You know, in the beginning, you said it was stressful. Uh, yeah. I have a really talented apprentice right now that's, you know, going through some personal stuff and taking a little break. And she's telling me, like, I get a lot of anxiety and very stressed. And the best way I could explain it to her 
is it's kind of like riding a bike. You know, in the beginning, yeah. you're nervous as hell. Am I going to fall? Am I going to get hurt? What's going to happen? But eventually, you'll get to a level where you'll be comfortable with it, and you don't get that. Like, for me, you know, I, I do I get nervous about tattoos? No. I get stressed about some tattoos that yeah. I think are going to be a little more difficult. A little bit of anxiety for a build-up piece. And, but those are the ones that I feel like at the end, one, are the most fulfilling because I do it and I go, oh, wow, I, I guess I am okay at this yeah. thing. And uh, they're the most satisfying to me. Good so I look, challenge. I want I want that challenge because, you know, to do the same old thing every day and it's the same ideas and it's the same people walking in and they all think they the first one to find it on Pinterest, yeah. you know. And yeah, just yeah like, like your average walk is just like kind of like a whatever yeah, tattoo, but like a tattoo you're looking forward yeah, to, man. you're drawing oh, for days, like that's the anxiety's my building. Favorite. And yeah. I don't... And but but on the flip side, when that person cancels or no shows, my whole day, yeah. I'm pissed. Yeah, because I'm like I like mentally was ready for this, prepared for this. Mm-hmm. I put in the work for this, you know. And that's the other thing, you know, to the clients out there who watch this stuff. Like, if you ever think we're charging you too much, we're undercharging you. Yeah. Okay, you don't understand the amount of work that went into to that piece, and and on top of that, you're not paying just for that piece. You're paying me for 19 years of experience. You're paying him for how long are you doing this now? 13 years? Yeah, 14? 13, 12. Yeah. Okay. You're paying for all of that. You know, it's like, it's like you watch the Olympics. You think that sprinter just was fast? <laughs> he put in the work to get to that level. You're paying for the lifetime that got us here. So uh, if you come in, like, that's another thing. Like, you come into my shop and you start trying to negotiate prices. Sorry not the guy for the job. If your first question is how much, <laughs> probably too much. <laughs> you know, like Yeah, and it's in like, the drawing time. Like I don't know what you spend on drawing. I'm sure it's like a little different for different sizes, but yeah. typically with me it's like 3 or 4 hours, you know. So if if you're doing a 7-hour session, there's that on top. And the reason it's 3 or 4 hours is cuz practice. Maybe some people it's 10 hours, you know, whatever it is. Look at and, and I I we had an We've had artists here that have been tattooing longer than me, and they're still spending, like, they're staying here till 3 in the morning, drawing nights in a row, just one tattoo, hours and hours, like, longer than whatever it's going to take to actually tattoo it. For sure, yeah. And they're not charging. They just ask for a $200 deposit for that. Do do a whole design and then fucking scrap it. Right. Yo, that's six hours of unpaid work I just did. How about this? You want to talk about differences between then and now? Thank you, Procreate. Because you've saved me hours. Yeah. I used to have to hand draw everything. Yeah. A smudge, get rid of it. Line got a little shaky, get rid of it. it. Something was underneath your piece of paper, get rid of it. Start again. You could put two hours into a drawing and then screw it up and your stencil's going to be screwed. Yeah. Throw it out. Do it again. Um, And in the drawing, I do spend a lot of time, especially the more intricate pieces and stuff that, you know, a lot of detail in them. Uh, I get down into them, and, and, you know, then all of a sudden I'm like, ah, oh, I put too much stuff in here, so then I got to redraw it or start taking things out. But, yeah, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. It's it's not just, you know, those few hours you're in the chair. It's everything that led up to that point. It's everything that is going into that drawing. It's everything that goes into putting that stencil on you and then, you know, getting through the actual tattoo itself. Yeah, yeah and, like, I know, like – I know, Cam, you put a lot of effort into the drawing, which I think is so important because that is really your foundation for, yeah. for the session. But I, And I understand why it's not great, but I'll see some artists like really rushing that process because, you know, in a sense, maybe they're not getting paid for it or it's like taking too long. Or so it, Sometimes it's difficult. It's like, damn, like, you know, I got to draw like for a whole day session – you know, and I have five of them this week and it's this never ending list of like drawing and and you feel the pressure and there's always that, like, there's always that dilemma where it's like, you know, maybe I can't spend as long as I want to on the design because realistically, like, it doesn't make sense for the process. Yeah, and and that's all fair and that's all true, you know, but that's something like, uh, you know, the TV shows, I, I won't name names because there's not really any that I particularly care for. And for those that invited me to interview, thank you, but no, thank you. Um, but, like, when, when the first one broke, yeah, you know, and they, they show that scene where the, the couple walks in and they want the, the back piece and 
They're like, oh, give me 10 minutes. Go grab a slice of pizza, <laughs> you know? And then they come in, and now it's nighttime, and they're wearing <laughs> right. different clothes. Yeah. And like, oh, I have it ready for you. Right. I get people come in, like, yeah, I want to I wanna do a tattoo, and, you know, it shouldn't be that big a deal. I'm like, well, yeah. I want to do a sleeve. It's such right, a, like, when unreal. You to do it? Well, like, now, if you have the time, oh, yes, I've been waiting just for you right. for this moment <laughs> today. Right. To go this, and you know what? I don't even need to draw it. We'll just get right to it. Like, right. it doesn't work that way. It's yeah. TV, people. Yeah. Unrealistic <laughs> expectations. There's a lot that goes into it behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, I love I when like they know how long it's going to take you. Dude, it should take no more than two hours, right? You know, like, uh, <laughs> are you? Yeah, bro, to set up and draw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it, Episode's only an hour. <laughs> 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 Me and the crew are talking about doing one of these TikTok videos based off that. Like, the person who calls in, like, hey, do you have time for a tattoo? Listen, walk-ins, first come, first serve. Come on in. If we can do it, we'll do it. If not, we'll set your appointment for another day. Well, it shouldn't take you long. Well, what is it you want? It's something really small. Well, what is it you want? It'll be really fast. Well, what is it? Why is it top secret? <laughs> can you tell me what you want? Like, <laughs> I got things to do, and being on the phone with you ain't one of them. Come down here. If we can do it, we will do it. And if not, we'll set your appointment for another day. Right. Like, what? <laughs> they, I, and I, I'll ask them. Oh, uh, you sure it's only going to take me, like, a few minutes? Yeah. How long have you been tattooing? Oh, I don't. Okay, then how do you know? Click. <laughs> yeah, and they want that price over the phone, too. Uh, they won't even tell you what they how want. Much? <laughs> right, I, get, I, I can't tell you how many emails and, and, you know, DMs I get. And it's like, hey, how much for this? Dude, I I, I'm looking at it on a six-inch screen. Yeah. Or a giant iMac. Yeah. And I, I don't an know the, body's, the, the person's body or their height or their weight. Like, how am I supposed What are you talking about? I had an inquiry the other day. Somebody was, like, uh, trying to, like, fill this whole spot on my, my tricep. And they go, like, what's your minimum? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, what? this Six whole your spot <laughs> for, <laughs> for whole tricep, my minimum <laughs> is, uh, what is. What is your guy's minimum? A hundred. hundred. Mine, yeah. too. All right. I got, and we I, still get people who fucking haggle. Oh, but uh, can you do 75? It's just a dot. Um, Dude, like, yeah. That, yeah, we did get a dot uh, one time. Like, I just want to see what it feels and like. And I'll be honest $100. with you, <laughs> I don't even want to set up my station for a hundred bucks. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Like, I'm doing you a favor in my eyes. And they're like a hundred. Oh, oh, this place charges sixty. Well, good luck. Yeah, there's a reason, and that's like wild because, like, I mean, most artists I feel like are making you know fifty to seventy percent, but I think it's more around fifty to sixty percent. You yeah. know, so like if you're doing a thirty, a sixty dollar tattoo, you're making thirty bucks. Yeah, you know, after supplies and whatever, it's got to be at you least. Lost. Yeah, it's, you lost. You know, it, yeah. it just that's your profit wild, margins bro. is nothing. Because like yo, you know, paperwork, talking to them, printing design, set up, you know, doing the tattoo. Wrapping them up, aftercare instructions, yeah. breakdown. It's like an hour. Dude. Well, don't forget about insurance, electricity, right, right. You know, heat. Like these, these are all expenses. Every square footage of every shop has a dollar amount to it just right. to open the doors, right? You know, and, and then hundred, hundred. And most people now are like, whatever. You know, twenty years ago it was sixty. Yeah. About, I don't know. Ten years later, it was eighty. And probably about five years ago, just before COVID, I raised it up to 100. Yeah. And part of that also was to keep a certain amount of the work out of the shop, you know, yeah. to be honest. Like I, I've always said, you know, my shop is not the cheapest. It's probably not the most expensive anymore, but I don't want to be the no frills of tattooing. Yeah, yeah. You know, we do quality work. You're going to get a good tattooer who's got a good attitude. They're going to give you the, they got the good bedside manner and all that. And you're going to get an experience. And that's what you're coming to yeah. our shop It almost for. incentivizes people to get bigger tattoos sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and or they go like, oh, I just want this, you know, and it's something small. I'm like, listen, you have other tattoo ideas? Yeah, do it with that one. Yeah, I only add 10, two. 20 bucks to your price. Yeah, I'll yeah. just throw it in, you know, but let's do something. Yeah, like get a piece and I'll throw in your little tattoo yeah. for fucking free. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I really want it. I'm like, okay, 100 was too much, and now you're going to throw it away yeah. for this and still come back for the other one? And, like, I'll think about, like, other products outside of the tattoo world that, like, you know, I buy. Mm. And, like, maybe... um you know, like if I'm buying just this like whatever, like little sling bag or like someone donates it and it's just, it's like free or it's like 10 bucks. I'm treating that thing like shit. Yeah. You know, if I go out of my way and I like really do some research and I get like a super nice like backpack or like travel bag, it is more expensive. Oh, yeah. But I take great care of it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a while for. Right. Uh, I mean, it could, you know, it could be a car, it could be, you know, a, a camera, whatever it is. It, 
I can't help it. Like I treat those things differently. And I feel like when clients come in and they, they wait and it is a little more expensive and it's bigger and they appreciate it more and they, they treat it better, yeah. you know? And I every hope. time I've done like a little <laughs> joke tattoo or like a dot, like whatever, like I'll see him. It'll be all like my boys. And like, I didn't even take care of it. Yeah. You it's know? A dry <laughs> shit yeah and it's on. like, cool. Thanks man. Like I just painted you this little canvas and you like <laughs> left it in the sun and scratch it with your fingernails. <laughs> and now it looks like shit. <laughs> Adrian's head. I'm like, you're going to take care of it? I oh, am. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, sh- <laughs> I showered today. Yeah, 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 I touched it. I made sure it was still there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you suck, Adrian. What's yeah. your preferred method of uh, healing? Of healing? Aftercare. Um, I'm totally on board with Sanoderm. You know, I tell him keep that on for two full days. I wipe him down with alcohol first. Uh, and then once that comes off, twice a day. Dial antibacterial soap, hands only, no sponges, no washcloths, none of that. Uh, soapy lather, wash it gently, rinse it clean, let it air dry, and then uh, a little bit of after inked. That's it. If you nice. can do that twice a day and not mess with it, you'll have a great tattoo. Right. If you go out in the sun place. or you decide to go swimming or take a long bath or scratch it or whatever, let that's your dog on like you. It. Yeah. Oh, my God. I had an issue years back. Years ago for a $13 tattoo, this lady tried to, like, raise all kinds of hell. Her tattoo got infected. And she's like, it's your fault, and I had to pay two fifty for the doctor and the meds and whatever. And she's yelling at me on the phone, and I'm like, who did it? And I find the artist who did it. I'm like, anything different happened? Nope, nope, nope. Go on her IG, and there it is, a ferret walking all <laughs> over her oh, tattoo. Man, bro. All over. That's gross. So grab another person's phone. This is before they had like the screen recording. Record that. Keep that in my back pocket. Give her a call back. Hey, just went on your Instagram. Looks like four hours after your tattoo, you had your ferret walking all <laughs> over it. And you're calling me? <laughs> Good luck. You leave him out <laughs> of this. Gonna take, <laughs> I'm going to take you to court. Take me to court. That waiver you signed basically said... Good luck. Don't care. <laughs> Have a nice life. Like, you're not getting anywhere with Are that. Are you insinuating my ferret is dirty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, right? I, I, and then she, she takes the video down, calls me back. <laughs> now what you going to do? I said, I'm smarter than you, lady. Yeah. I already got it recorded. What's your phone number? Let me text yeah. you something real quick. <laughs> I'm going to send it to you in case you forget what you did. Give me a break. Bro, and like, $13. For a $13. T- <sighs> I paid 13 I tipped the girl 7 Only? That's it? <laughs> Shame on you. Fucking found 20 bucks. I'm always like back and forth about like if we should do it. Because I'll tell you the 13th. We do it. We do it here. But we do a minimum. There were years that I didn't do it. Yeah. Okay. I was like, screw that. I'm not doing it. What I have found as a shop owner, I lose money on that day. Sure. This is purely a promotional thing for me at this point. And I look at it as an advertising thing. You know, if I was going to pay for advertising, well, now I have. Hundreds of people coming in and putting it out on their social media and tagging the shop. So that's huge. What I find it to be is a great benefit to the newer artists and the apprentices who are coming up. One, it puts them under a stressful situation, so it knocks some of the nerves out of them. Two, it gets them a lot of reps. Mm -hmm. And three, it starts to build their clientele because even though a majority of the people coming in for $13 tattoos are only there for $13 right. tattoos see, and you, you never see them right. other so than that. If you that. treat them right though, they'll come back. But the ones that are thinking about getting real tattoos and are serious about it, they become clients of those artists if they had a good experience with them. Yeah. So for me, it is something I'll continue to do. If my artists now, the experienced ones choose not to do it, I don't force anyone to do it. Uh, every once in a while, I didn't do the last one. I think the last one I did was August, uh, probably about a year and a half ago. And I did like 86 tattoos. And, and it was purely because one of my artists was like, I'm going to break your record. I was uh, like, you ain't breaking <laughs> shit. <laughs> and was, so for me, it was just bragging rights. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, I, I'm a very competitive you person. Goal. You're like, I don't even care so about like, these tattoos. Right, I'm, I'm going to do a hundred of them, you know. Right. And I'm like, I mean, hustling back and forth. Set up, breakdown, tattoo. Set no up, breaks, breakdown, tattoo. Boom. Nope. Telling everybody how to take care of their their stuff for thirteen bucks, you know right. what I mean? It's like it's not worth Everyone the Everyone has a tattoo. Listen up. Dude, <laughs> no, no, I've done it. Grab yeah, a I've ferret. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Great point though. Like I think like Friday the Thirteenth are great for beginning artists. Like it, they, I definitely felt like after my first Friday the Thirteenth, like the day after, I felt like I was a better artist. Well, you are because you got in the reps and you had to deal under pressure, you know, and. 
you don't want to spend all day doing it, but you still got to put out quality work. Mm -hmm. So it almost takes the thinking part out of it. So it calms you down a little, Yeah, you know, and then when you get through that and look, it's a long day. Like (laughs) this year, my artist, we used to be open 10 to 10, you know, for years and about a year, year and a half ago, I reduced that some. And uh, I was scared to do that because a a big part of, uh, I don't worry about other shops in the area. And it's not because I don't respect them or anything, but I only got four walls that I can control yeah, what happens yeah. inside of. So that's where my focus is. And I reduced the hours for my people, and it's been okay. But uh, Friday the 13th rolled around. They're like, we want to do 13 hours of tattooing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. How about it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I can tell you, and, and Wharton, they didn't cut the list early enough. You know, we got to cut this list at like 13 4 minutes later. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. This is a bad idea. Yeah, and they were there to like 2 a.m., from like 9 a.m. Yeah. to 2 a.m. Yeah. And I'm like, Yo, what are the numbers? Like, we're still tattooing. Yeah. Like, God bless you. <laughs> yeah, that Those days for me are great gone. for team building. You can see who works well. Yeah, you, you see who works well. They do pick up the slack for one another, but there's always the one or two that are just doing the bare minimum. Like, at the end of a Friday the 13th special, when I see your, your slip and you got 20 tattoos on it, like, what'd you do? Yeah. <laughs> what, what happened? Now, if you're a younger artist and you tattoo slower, right. I get that. Yeah. But if you're an experienced artist and you wanted to be a part of this and you only did that, I'm like, why'd you come in? Yeah. yeah. You know, it doesn't seem worth it to me. Right. Yeah, those 20 tattoos are just a normal appointment on another Yeah, well, you made like, like 200, one, 200 one bucks. normal appointment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> you, know? you made 200 bucks worth 13 you did, hours. You did yeah. 20 Brutal. setups and breakdowns today Brutal. for nothing. <laughs> you owe me money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You Friday the 13th are fun for me still. Dude, I remember... Uh, do you remember the billboard you put up? Yeah. Which one? By Van? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell Cam about that. So, look, Cam, I'll tell you straight up. I am the nicest guy you will ever meet. I am your worst nightmare, too. <laughs> I'm, whoever, <laughs> I'm whoever you want me to be. If you're cool with me and you respect me, you will get that back and then some. But if you screw me over, I'm coming for everything. And I mean everything. So I used to work at this shop, and when I left to open up my own, I... uh. He, I start hearing, you know, my area is like high school part three, okay? Everybody knows everything. If you say my name in a sentence, by lunch I hear about it, all right? And, that, and I'm not trying to say I'm, I'm hot shot or anything big deal. You know, it's just a small yeah. area. Everybody knows me. I grew up there. Yeah, like small town. You know? So this guy, I leave, and people are coming and looking for me. And he starts telling me, oh, he's in jail. <laughs> oh, he's in Florida in rehab. Oh, we don't know. He disappeared. He's on heroin. You know, all these things, which none were true. So it gets back to me. And uh, I'm at the Wharton shop. I had just opened a few months earlier. This old guy, rest in peace, Dana. We miss you. He was was that that little angel on your shoulder. He was my unofficial night watchman. If something (laughs) shady was going on around the shop, he would text me. This one day I come out front, smoke a cigarette, and he's like, hey, you all right? And I, I must have like this just this angry face on like I'm, I'm pissed and I'm, I'm going, I'm going to vans 12 o'clock. He opens 12, 15. He's going to be getting put in a bus to go to the hospital. <laughs> like we got a problem. Yeah. And uh, he's like, what's wrong? I said, nothing. <laughs> he's like, he's like, Oh man, you look upset. You know, come on, tell me about it. I said, nothing, man. And he cries a little more. If I'm like, yo, this guy's talking shit. He's telling people I'm on heroin. I got a daughter. I got another daughter on the way. Yeah. I'm like, I got kids, man. Like it's not it's not business. This isn't dollars and cents. This is my family. I don't need my kids hearing rumors like that. Yeah. You know, especially when they're not true. So he's like, so what you can do? So I'm going to go down there. He goes, and then what? I'm going to ask him straight up. And he goes, and if he tells you he is saying it, probably going to fuck him up. He goes, and if he tells you not, probably going to fuck him up worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He goes, you got a daughter, he just said, and another one on the way. What good are you if you're in jail? What good are you if you get arrested? You know the town is already questioning whether they want a tattoo parlor here or not. How's that look when your name's in the newspaper? Owner of Expressive Inc. locked up for assault. So I started thinking about it. You know, this guy's right. I need to grow up a little bit. I can't be doing knucklehead stuff. So I sit back, I think about it. Yeah, I'm going to do billboards. I'm going to do a billboard campaign. You know what? I was looking for something to do for advertising. It just so happens to be one right across the street from his shop. Dude, it's like his shop, <laughs> billboard. Like, if you look out this door across the street, <laughs> right there, okay? And I put, I got it. Got to be 10 by 20, okay? Billboard up. Big tattoo. 
and in big ass letters right across the top, Expressive Inc. And right under it, Trent Harillis. And then I went on Facebook. See, this is where like my divorce derailed things because like social media and all that. I, I was doing well yeah. early on. And then my life got turned upside down and my focus shifted gears, which I had to do, unfortunately. But what I did was go take a picture in front of my billboard, tag the shop, and get a half price piercing or ten percent <laughs> off your tattoo. Cause I figure one, this maximizes my advertising, mm-hmm. right? Because not only is the billboard up on Route 46 in right. Rockaway, but everybody's gonna share it on their social media and see my shop and my name. And anybody looking for me is gonna know. And anybody who ever walks in there again and asks for me, if he says, We don't know, or he's in jail, or he's in Florida, when they pull out, they're gonna go. Right. He's in Wharton, New Jersey. <laughs> well, imagine, five minutes away. Bro, imagine like being in the shop and seeing all these people outside Just like taking photos, taking photos of themselves. <laughs> like we love tattoos and then leaving your tattoo <laughs> shop. They're like parking at your shop. The right best, across the the street to best take a photo. part was it was a little lower. So it was only about like six to eight feet off the ground. So nice. people were pulling up their cars, climbing on their cars, and climbing up on the ledge <laughs> and posing in front of the billboard. Right. Like, hey, there's people doing handstands. People put Fire. people on their shoulders. People got their kids up there. And it was everywhere. Ever, to the point where he got so, so pissed about it. He called. He made up some story about some kid falling and cracking his head open. And at, like, the billboard was for four weeks. So at like three and a half weeks, uh, I was excited. My father was coming to visit. My father lives in Greece. And uh, he was a tattooer. So I'm like, I can't wait for him to see this billboard. You know, it was a real proud moment for me, you know, small business owner Mm -hmm. and finally got a little money in my pocket. Like life is good. And they, it's, he's coming the next day and I see it's gone and and they didn't replace it. Like it was just like all the torn paper. He wanted that picture. (laughs) And I'm like, God damn. This counts for dad. I called them (laughs) flipping out and then I start checking, you know, call police station, you know, Hey, somebody fell and cracked their head. Would anybody know? Yeah, there'd be a report. They would have to go right. in the ambulance the whole night. And it turned out he just made up a story because he was sick of seeing it down. And they gave me another one for free for a month. So Damn. it worked yeah. out totally in my favor. But yeah, fuck you for talking shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Got another billboard on the way. <laughs> yeah, that was fire. Yeah. I was like, that's oh, sick. that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got him back good. <laughs> yeah. That's. Yeah. He's like, I would have taken the ass whooping, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what, though? You know what, though? Dana was right. He, he calmed me down and he talked sense to me and he's like, look, what are you, what are you going to do, man? He's like, uh, it, he, he sounds like the kind of guy who calls the police. I said, oh, most definitely. He's the call the police guy. He goes, so what are you doing? You know, he, he's just baiting you, you know? I was like, yeah, but if you don't learn a lesson, he's like, so you got to find something different. Right. And by noon, by noon, I had come up with this plan and it, it was perfect. That was, you know? that's pretty fire. There was yeah. another shop in the area right down the road from there. And the two of them had beef, and they started running their mouth, and they got a billboard right outside their store. <laughs> so they got one. And then they, the little local pizzeria over there um, that I've been going to forever, uh, they were telling me how they were in their shop, and I had a little thing on their, their wall and their tattoo in their pizzeria for my shop. And they're like, yo, they won't come here no more. They're mad because you got this thing on our wall here. So it's, uh, look, take it down. If it's costing you money, you're not hurting my feelings. I understand. Right, right, right. And they're like, Fuck that. Nobody's going to tell me how to run my business. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. And keep coming and, back. And they started running their mouth. So then I went and put a billboard there. And I was in there maybe two weeks later. And he's like, you just don't give a fuck. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> you know, like I play nice with all my customers. You know, I, I do the job. I, you know, I give them what they need. And, you know, I'm, and I'm happy to do it most days. And some days it's an act. And I'll tell my employees, okay, time to put on the show. Right. Because sometimes it is totally a show. Um, but if you screw me. I'm coming for you. <laughs> you know, another one in Denville did that, you know, and then he went on and he's like, hope this helps your business, you know, like trying to call me out. And I wrote back, ah, oh, thanks, man. I love seeing other shops support small businesses and other <laughs> shop owners. <laughs> yeah, you know who you are. There, I feel like every time I go back and visit, there's just like more and more Dude, and more and more. They're what? like pizzerias now. Up but there. then I go back every like corner. a year or two later and then it's gone. It's gone. And then there's a new one. New and it's name. gone. Yep. It's, there's there's a couple locations that it just goes like tattoo parlor vacant for a year tattoo parlor yeah. vacant for a year and uh they are they're like pizzerias now man everybody thinks they can do it and the truth is you know sadly you can't you know there's a lot that goes into it there's a lot that goes into it and a lot of sleepless nights and and you know you know the work life balance is difficult you yeah. know it, it 
nobody's going to take care of the shop like you or me for mine. Right. Um, nobody's going to care like that as much as we want you to and as much as you guys really should because you represent the shop and everybody there represents the shop. So the overall success of it, like you got to take pride in that. You got to be happy with where you're working and you got to want to promote that like it's your own because whether you know it or not, you get a commission, don't you, Cam? Guess what? You're a silent partner here because yeah. you're, you're sharing in the revenue and the profits and he's taking the money that the shop makes and he's, he's investing in all these people and paying them for all this. So it's very much a partnership whether you know that or not. And, and I think a lot of artists don't realize that. They think like, oh, I'm worth this and I need that and this guy's offering me that and the grass is always greener and I can't tell you how many people have left and then bounce around from shop to shop over the next couple of years until they eventually come back with the tail between their legs and ask for another opportunity. And if you left on good terms and you were cool and you do quality work and you're a good person, yeah, my door's still open to you. But if you leave like some people have left, save face, man. Don't call me. You're not welcome. <laughs> yeah. You're not welcome. Yeah, and I... You know, it's tough because, like, everyone's, like, a little different, and I'm always trying to figure out, like, what kind of person I'm meeting or, like, walking into. And because there really are some people, I feel like, that just want to, like, find somewhere to, like, be in a corner, not really work that much. They yeah. kind of got other things going on. And forever I was like, that's bad. That's not good. I, I don't, you know – want to be like that and, and it's it's not it's totally fine i've just learned that maybe this isn't the shop for those people true uh because i'm so much like let's grow let's work like if you show up here like from whatever shop you're coming from you're probably gonna work a little more or like be asked to work a little harder or whatever because i want i want to grow and if you're comfortable like you're not growing yeah. You know, and I know there's tons of times where I'm like, come on, Cam, let's do this, let's do this. And he's like, oh, it's my day off. And I'm like, I know, but it'll be worth it. You know, it'll be worth it. Let's do it now because, you know, in 20, 30 years, like, we're, we might be done. Look, you have the youth on your side right now. That comes with energy, okay? Just go to bed earlier, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Take advantage of it. If he gives you advice on how to save money, take the advice. I'm constantly telling my employees, hey, take take X amount of percent of your money. Figure out what you need to live, whatever's left over. Figure out how much of that you want for fuck around money and put the rest away. There's no 401k. There's no retirement plan. Mm -hmm. So you need to grind it out when you can. And that's my mindset because, look, I'll tell you straight up. When I'm, I'm 44. When I'm 50, I want to be tattooing people I want to tattoo, when I want to tattoo, artwork I want to tattoo. And that's it. I'm not doing the walk-ins. I'm not taking the pieces I'm not interested in. I'm trying to build myself up to a point so that at 50, I can enjoy that second half or last third of life, whatever I get. If you don't do it now, you're never going to do it. And you don't want to be the 70-year-old tattooer that the world has passed you by and the game has elevated itself to a level that you can no longer keep up with and, and don't have the capacity to uh, grow into. You know, it, it's already over. And I know a lot of those old-school tattooers you know, and, and I respect them, and look, I, I get it, and they did their time, but the world's passed them by, and now they're they're hard up for money, and they're bouncing from shop to shop till somebody kicks them out. You got to take advantage now, and I get it. The, the artists who do just enough to get by, maybe their situation's different. Maybe their parents got money. Maybe they're going to be okay, you know, if tattooing, you know, takes a turn and goes downhill. When I started tattooing, it was flash off the wall, okay? Can I get T-17, you know right, what I mean? right. And you're like, okay, now let's sure get a line drawing. Let's get a bald yeah. eagle here. Look through a folder, pull it out. Perfect. Yeah. Which side do you want it on? Okay, let me photocopy this on some vellum and flip it for you. Yeah, you know, and and good to go. Now it's a lot different. It takes it's more labor intensive, but you gotta you gotta make the best of the time you got because you fall down tomorrow and you break your hand. Guess what? You're out of work. And all those tattoos you let pass by, you're gonna wish you had done. You're gonna wish you had that money in the bank. You know, so. Take advantage of it when you can. Somebody walks in and you're not in the mood, just do it. Just do it. Those are the, those are the tattoos. I tell people, the, everybody thinks like, oh, I'm going to specialize in something and I'm going to be this rock star. It doesn't work that way, okay? The tattoos you don't want to do, pay the rent. And the tattoos you want to do, pay for the party. Yeah. And if you can understand that and you can adopt that, my, that mindset, you'll be okay. And when you get to my age, you won't be having to grind it out no more. You'll be able to, then 
is the time to relax and party and get your boat and do whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. And it's hard because I remember like my dad and people like telling me that when I was like younger, like even like open a Roth IRA account, you know, yeah. and like it just sounded so boring. I had like no motivation to, to do that, yeah. yep. you know, or I, I know you're decent with finances and whatever, but like investing like in your future that's so far away, it doesn't even feel real, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. like, come on, like. I'm trying to like go out with my girl and I'm trying to buy a battle pass. And like, like, yo, I just yeah. started making, yeah. like, I just started making real adult money. Right. And now you're telling yeah. me I got to yeah. throw it away to future kids. Yeah. But you, you don't have talk to. that guy. You don't have to because look at your lifestyle now and you're making ends meet, right? You're not hurting for money, are you? Not anymore, no. Okay. Now, you continue to expand your clientele. You, you continue to grow as an artist. You continue to do better work. You start to charge more money. You're going to make more money. What you need to do is check yourself and not go out and buy the Range Rover, okay? Don't go buy the fucking Mercedes. Stay with your car. I'm looking at Hondas right now. There you go. Stay <laughs> with the Honda. It'll run forever. Yeah, I wouldn't you know tell him I mean? to stay with the car right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, do, I need a new car. My but car. you understand what he's yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 you get the gist of it, right? Yeah. Take all that new money that you haven't had. Cut it in half, okay? Yeah. If you want to be rich, cut it in half and invest the half. If you want to be wealthy, cut it into quarters and take three quarters of that and invest that. And save it, dude. Sixty five hundred a year, I think, is what the Roth IRA is now. It's tax money now. You don't get taxed on the money that you you earn on it. Okay, when you retire, look, you, we were talking the other day. You know, you, your life is changing. You're getting married. You know, you want to have children. I get that. When your kids are born, I just did this for my kids last year. My kids helped me out making the little videos and stuff. Yep. Guess what? They're now employees of Expressive Inc. Guess what they got? Roth IRAs. Yeah. They don't know it. You know, I told them I bought you one shot, one uh, share of Tesla, one of Apple, one of Google. They don't know what they got in there, and they mm-hmm. won't. And the day that I'm on my deathbed or they're getting married or whatever it might be, I'm going to say, here you go. When you're 59 and a half, you're set. But I ain't going to tell them until that moment because mm-hmm. I want them to go out and work and earn their spot. I don't want them thinking, like, oh, I got all this. I ain't got to do shit. Like, you still got to go and be productive in this world. But for you, at this age, you're young, man. Take advantage of it. Take that that extra money that you don't need. And decide, do I want to be rich or do I want to be wealthy? And then invest it. You know, and even when the market goes down, you're looking, oh, man, I lost half of my money. This guy's killing me. You know, nah, don't worry about it. 18 months, the market always comes back on average. Mm-hmm. Um, how many years you got? How old are you? 22. 22. Shit. Yeah, you said, I mean, even if it's like, and I always lifetime. tell. Yeah, I always tell people like. Even if it's minimum contribution. Yeah, something. You know, like, it, and I mean, you let me know, I'll give you, you know, financial advisor, but you, you hire someone else to do it. Yeah. And you're like, hey, can you just set this up to my bank account? It's one phone call and it just <coughs> Not goes in every month or, or whatever. And you're set, even if it's fucking 10, 20 bucks, what, anything. And, and for the record, I'm putting like neither John nor I are financial advisors. No, 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 no. If you lose your money, it's no. not my fault. It's Cam's fault. Right? You listen You listen to tattoo guys for financial advice. That's your I'd fault. say like the past three months, I've good, put like a good chunk of every check away. If you can do that, God bless you, man, and keep yeah. going. For real. For real. The fun and the toys and all that, you'll get it. You'll get to where you yeah. want to get. I'm, I'm really good but. at like waiting and like if I want something, like breaking it down into like how much can I put away per check until I get this item. Yeah. Pretty good about stuff like that. Cam, I need you to do me a favor. With your sweatshirt, wipe that up because I've been staring at that water and it's bothering me. Boom. But Thank yeah, the you. the <laughs> what you're saying about the kids, uh, we just I just started like talking about that with my financial people, like hiring them as um like child actors yeah. for the Roth IRA. Yeah. And like I did the math, even if you do it for the first ten years of their life and you max out contributions, they will be millionaires. Millionaires. Which is wild, because max contribution, I think it's like maybe it's 8 or 10K. It's 6,500 a year is it now. 60, yeah. It was 6 this year. It changed to 6,500. You know, and if you break that down like per month, like, yeah, it's money, but it's not, it's like, to be a fucking millionaire. A little like, over $500 a month. Yeah, dude. That's, yeah. That's, that's really not that much. That's like that's first one, half of one day for even me. Even if you do so half one time, it, like it, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah. Like, when I started seeing that and looking into that, cause I, you know, I don't shoot if i die my kids are screwed i don't have life insurance i don't have right. none of that right i'm like yo i can put that money into life insurance okay and i look i did the math i'm like why would i do that i got three kids i can do this and then when i'm dead and gone i got them set up pretty for retirement 
why wouldn't I do that? You know, and it's, it's not enough money that it hurts. Like, look, nobody likes spending money. Nobody likes taking money and putting it somewhere else, but it's just a no brainer. Yeah. You know, I put them on the books. I get to write it off. They help me make videos. So it's legitimate. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Done. Done. No brainer. My parents did that for me. <laughs> yeah, I wish mine too. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, yeah. you know? I can't touch mine because my mom. I give her a half and then she, I let her store it. It's probably under her mattress, but whatever. She's <laughs> hey, that's, that's just in a fucking DSW <laughs> shoebox. What, to, like, to save money? Yeah, like I yeah. send her an amount and I can't have any access to it, which I love. Your mom, who, she's here, Florida? Yeah. All right. You don't see her rolling around in like a new escalator or anything? <laughs> I haven't sent her that much. Actually, <laughs> now that you brought it up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I you she, she did just move to that high rise. <laughs> like, Mark, can I just see it? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, man. Anything in closing? Are we damn? Oh, wow. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Time flies when you're learning lessons. No, really. <laughs> it's been very informative. What did you learn? A lot. Uh, like, <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. How was your day in school? Good. Yeah. That's my kids. What'd yeah. you learn today? Nothing. I'm like, why do I send you? Why do I wake up so early to take you to this? You place? learned stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good lessons. And a little. You got any questions before you close this out? <laughs> was he actually like a good apprentice? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, in the beginning, he was great. Yeah. He was great. I don't think I ever yelled at you. Yeah, I don't think. Very so. rare. Everybody gets yelled at least once. I've I've been in people's faces like screaming, like, "Do you understand me?" <laughs> no. And they're like, "Okay." I'm scared. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my god!" No, he was you were great. I don't. Other than you know the big thing, I you were there when you were supposed to be, and you never questioned anything I asked you to do. He was a model apprentice, actually, when you think about it. So props to you, John. Well, I didn't have anything else in my life. <laughs> no, but it was, dude, I was excited as fuck, yeah, dude. I was like, was. this is so, like, cool. And, like, you know, because I worked at Dunkin' Donuts and, like, other, that kind, or, like, for my dad on, like, that. construction. I did, too. Like, Me, too. Like, jobs that, when you're 17, suck. Yeah, like, this but sucks. you know it doesn't matter. Right, and then you show up somewhere, and it's, like, chill. And I, I think in my first week, like, Trent was like, if you get all this done, like, you can go watch Walking Dead on TV. I'm like, I'm at work right now <laughs> watching Walking Dead. This right. is sick. You know? I was like, this is this is the best. It's so a, I was very happy to be there. It's a great gig. You know, it really is. You know, a bad day tattooing is better than a good day at probably any job, really. You're more free. You get to speak your mind. You don't have to worry too much about being canceled and stuff like that. There's no HR yourself. department. Yeah. You really do. You know, like if you fuck up, you say some terrible shit, you're going to get fucking roasted for it. But you, you get to be yourself and you don't have to worry about the man looking over your shoulder and be like, you can't do this. You got to wear that. Yeah. Like one of my favorite things to do is like bust in the shop when it's busy and be like, all right, surprise inspection. Everybody's tattoos covered, piercings out, you know, and <laughs> the customer's like, what the fuck's with this guy? <laughs> you know, it's like, nah, I'm just fucking around. Know, but like you get to be you, yeah. and you can't do that too much anywhere anymore. No, yeah, so. which was like one of the things that made me want to get into yeah. this and, industry. And when I was telling you earlier, like you don't understand the opportunity this guy's giving you, so don't fuck it up, Cam. Try not to wake the fuck up and get to work. All right, because he's time. he's giving you an opportunity that you you say you understand and you think you don't you don't because if you did you'd be here on time every day. Yeah. So seriously, man, wake the fuck up get here and do your job and do it at a high level and you'll be great and you're going to have a leg up on everyone because of the exposure that this guy's created so take advantage of that man and be appreciative of it and fucking reciprocate it back to him are there any character traits you can see when you like from john that you can see applied to your yeah. career because now that trend's here i see a lot yeah of a lot john. of similarities yeah, yeah like the compassion the understanding all yeah. that, the respect, the, dr the drive. Yeah. Look, you see, like the the billboard thing sounds like <laughs> something you would do a hundred percent. Yeah, no, because I, we have situations where you know, even if we have to let somebody go, and it's it becomes a scene. John always keeps his cool, and even people who leave and I'm like, you know, fuck this place. He'll if they call, he'll give him a reference. He's like, you know, best of luck, bro. Look, I, I, I will when when people leave again, and it depends on how they left. 
and I get a call and they're like, hey, what can you tell me about this guy? I, I don't volunteer anything. So ask me questions. Right. I'll answer them. Mm-hmm. And if they left cool, they get a glowing review. Okay? Hey, they were great. They did this. They did that. If they left cool. If they left like an asshole, I'll answer the question honestly. Right. And if you happen to ask the question that they didn't want me to answer, it's not my fault. Right. What am I going to lie That's who you are. I'm not going to lie about it. I don't lie. I am who I am. But if they asked the question and you were cool and you left on the right, the right way, I'll sidestep it. I'll still be honest, right, right, right. but there might be a little sugar sprinkled on that answer. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? How was it when he left? It was a little rocky at first, but it, everything was super smooth once the police showed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> once he was in the back of the car, it was yeah. all fine. <laughs> Don't ask if you pulled out a knife. Don't ask if you pulled out a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have any weapons? <laughs> Fuck! No, I try not to. Like, I've snapped on a couple of people inside the shop, but I try and, like, let's go out back. Let's yeah. go talk about yeah. it, you know, and we'll have that conversation. Unless it's something egregious, like, you know, and you, you caught me on the wrong day at the wrong time, then I might lose my shit. Yeah. You know, but I like to think I don't lose my cool unless it was warranted. Yeah. Hopefully. If you deserve it, you fucking deserve it. Sometimes. Yeah. You know, there's a fine line between being cool and being an asshole yeah anything else answer the question <laughs> what was the question <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah would you you see yourself yeah, trying to answer the question yes for <laughs> you um from john <laughs> the one thing like i've always like hoped and like not even hope like i wanted like to actually maintain like from him is like definitely the drive the work the mentality um, cause it's more than just like tattooing with him. It's definitely like the, the, the work ethic. Cause even sometimes I'm like, yeah, I can't believe this dude does all this shit. I'm like, I don't know how the fuck he does all of it. And he like maintains it and, and does it well. And like, he does continues to grow still. When I think there's no more room to grow, it just keeps fucking pushing. And it's doing just, a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Look, and it, and if you take everything he teaches you. And then you take it a step further, just like I call you, right? Like we yeah. bounce ideas off one another. The social media thing, I'm just trying to break into it now, you know? And how many times have I called you and talked to you about it? Yeah, yeah. You know? And he's like, come down. Get an inside look. Come do the pie. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm very appreciative to come down here and do this. I'm very excited to do it, you know? And it gives me this inside look. It gives me some insight. So one day, you may get to a point where you're successful enough, and then you can go back. And if you were cool and you did your work and you did the effort, you can then come use him as a resource, just like when he asked me a question. And then he may even hit you up and ask you like I do with him. Yeah, Cam, how do I uh, program these AI tattoo machine <laughs> that tattoo people? <laughs> my software is out of date. <laughs> how do I update my tat robot? <laughs> Thank God you didn't say, I learned not to smile. <laughs> learned to hate everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's just getting old. That's just getting old. There's, there's, oh, my God. There's so much stuff I can't stand anymore. <laughs> used to just be like, ah, whatever. Now I'm like, God damn it. And then I'm like, why am I so angry about this? I don't even care. We can talk about it on the Patreon. You can. <laughs> All right, you want to close this out? Closing. Uh I want to give Trent a huge thanks. Um, yeah, thank you, dude. Yeah, today was pleasure, definitely man. definitely an honor for me. It's cool to just, like, lineage right here, you know, to meet my mentor's mentor. It's a super cool thing. Um, yeah, I'm still kind of, like, at a loss of words. It's just really cool for me to be able to, like, sit here with you guys and, you know, hear your stories. It's awesome. Well, it's my pleasure. All right. Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable. Thanks again for Trent for joining us, man. Uh Super sick episode, and we'll catch you guys next time. I need to tell you about Allegory's new Ultra Black. This stuff is dark, maybe even darker than my childhood. It is amazing for lining, shading, and even blackouts. And I know a thing or two about black and out. You got to check this stuff out on AllegoryInc.com. Use discount code UNEMPLOYABLE for 20% off. Again, go to AllegoryInc.com, check out their new Ultra Black, Use discount code UNEMPLOYABLE for 20% off.